Hey YouTube, Art here. In this tutorial series, I'm going to show you the basics of Maya so that you guys can start making your own models, keep it simple. And uh, if this video is going too fast, please let me know and I can slow it down for you guys. But uh, I'm making this uh, hoping that you have already at least opened the software. So um, first and foremost, uh, I want you guys to always make a habit of saving a project so you need to set up your project first so that everything is clean and we can move forward so it's quite simple you need to go into file project window click on new name your project click on this folder here set your destination say select and then accept when you do that your project has been set up right now, if you hit Control S, you can see that it goes into your desktop, it goes into that first, and it goes into the pre-made folder called Scenes. Just click here and name your scene, hit Enter. And there you go, you have saved your scene now. And this is the beginning of your Maya project or any project you wanna start. And if Maya does crash on you, you can always um, access it through that folder. Make sure you save it uh, you know at regular intervals so that you don't lose any progress So that is how you set up your scene. That is how you save your um, whole project. So let's move on Okay, so now I'm going to show you how you can import images or reference images to start your modeling so before that I just want to show you quick basic controls of Maya to navigate in the scene. This is the shelf window. I'm currently in poly modeling and this is all we're going to use. I'm not going to go into anything else because this is a 3D modeling tutorial. So when you're in this poly modeling, just click on this and you have a cube. So if you hit, uh, so the shortcut key for scaling the cube is R but um, you don't have to memorize that right now. So you can just go into scale, set this to five, five, and five. And this is the channel box. You can see that I can change values here, which affects this particular cube when selected. This is for rotation, so I can rotate the cube 30 degrees on the Y axis, and you see that it affects it here. Control Z to go back one step, now, if you want to move around this cube, um, the hotkeys display is shown here. So please use that as a reference as well. But the first way to navigate through your viewport is zooming, which is just scrolling your wheel, right? Scrolling your mouse wheel, that's all. You scroll it and it goes in and goes out, that's it. And if you want to rotate, uh, Alt is the core key of Maya. So you hold down Alt, and then left click and then you can rotate around the cube so alt left click and rotate that's how you rotate around the cube if you let go of your right and hold your middle mouse button you can pan in Maya so let's do that again so alt and left click is rotate alt and middle mouse is pan scroll is for zoom right and if i hold alt and right click it's for you, you can call this smoother zoom i guess you know you have more control over it right so let's call it controlled zoom so wheel is just you know it, it goes in really abruptly but alt and right click goes in smooth and alt and left click rotate alt and mid Pan. That's all you need to know to navigate in Maya. And if you hit space, it splits your viewport. So this main window here is called the viewport. This is the perspective view. These three windows are orthographic views. 
perspective means 3d you can literally rotate the view whereas in orthographic you cannot rotate the view it's fixed on the top where you can see here top this is the front of here and the side of the cube so these are fixed views you use them as references to make your perspective look good right and here is the gizmo it's a small little indication of where your x y and z arrows are and remember the colors it's quite similar to you know most of the software so red is x blue is z y is green right so that's your gizmo and space is to bring out the graphic if you hover over an orthographic view press space again it toggles into that view that's how you maximize it so hit space again and you can go into front hit space again go into perspective once you get used to this you can switch really fast right and that'll help you a lot for navigation and that is how you move around and you rotate around your scene so that's how you do all that now let's import an image so remember we set up a project and this is why I told you guys to do it because now if I go back here to my desktop you can see that my first is here so I open this go into my source images right and then drag in my reference image into my source images anytime you want something to be easily accessible do put it in your source images if you close this and open up Maya and then go into this panel here your viewport go to the view image plane you can import an image right for this I'm gonna switch to top view go to view import image import image and you can see that you can see car here so for example if you do download a reference and it just goes into your downloads folder or you randomly move it somewhere else if you do this you'll have to go back all the way searching for that file so if you while downloading it set your path to source images it directly comes into Maya so you don't have to worry about it just click on it say open there's your image go into perspective and there you go you have your reference images you can set it down a little and you can start modeling so that's uh, for importing images setting a project and moving around the scene now I'm gonna talk about what each and every window of Maya does and how you can set up your view to make it look a little better and I want you guys to follow this view because if you're just 3d modeling it's gonna be really helpful for you guys I've been doing this for a long time so hopefully it helps you guys too so firstly when you look at this scene and you see how small our project now our viewport is right it's small it's not that big it's a little clumped up by all the other windows but honestly if I tell you that we can actually clear up a lot of more space so that you have more freedom to work with then you know it's it's a really good idea so let's start off with these windows here all these windows over here are not needed when we are just 3d modeling because it belongs to animators it's the timeline the rain slider maybe this is the command line and the help line that's how it is and you can hide all these by going into windows going into UI elements clicking this two lines here so that it rips off um, the list and now you can just go here switch off timeline switch off rain slider switch off command switch off help now I just want you to see how significantly big your view pivot is right immediately you get a more you get more space to work with and that's one once you get into more advanced modeling you will not need the shelf anymore so the shelf can be removed as well that's one way of removing windows by going to UI elements the other way is by pressing space when you hold down space you get the hotbox hotbox is basically a bunch of important options everywhere scattered in your Maya into one area so for example file edit cre uh, create and select if you notice this this is exactly the same as this view shading lighting and show this is exactly the options over here so it's basically all these 
little things put into one. If you hold down space, go to the right side of these two white lines and hold down your left mouse, you can see every window. And this is because it says hotbox controls here to the right side of Maya. So if you imagine Maya as a center, which is a space, you move to the right, which is the hotbox controls, click left, and then you can bring back your time slider by just bringing the, you know, this line here to time slider and letting go of your left mouse. And that brings your time slider back instead of going all the way to windows. So let's do that. Remove time slider and this shelf can be removed by doing this. And now you have a lot more space and you don't need the toolbox as well. This is how I work. This is how usually I work. But uh, this is once you get into advancement. So please bring back tools and please bring back shelf. And I would like you guys to work in this mode because we don't need any more of animation, but this will really help you. So that's how you make your scene look good. And if you're wondering the grid, my grid looks different than yours. Yours will be much smaller cubes with a different color, right? If you want something like this, you can come here to grid, double click this. Oh, I'm sorry. Just right click it and say grid options. Here you have the color of your grid and you can copy my length, width and grid lines every unit. And when you do that, you get a grid like mine. It's plain and simple. Now I'm going to show you how to create simple primitives. So remember when I told you that get your shelf here. So for example, if I click here, you get a cube, right? If this is spear, this is cylinder and you guys know the rest. So you can do that. That's one way of getting your primitives here. The second way is going into create polygons and then you have everything here. Remember, whenever you click something, the window closes the list and it creates the object you selected. If you want to make multiple, you can go to create polygon, double line, rip off the list and keep it here. Now you can make multiple. That's another way. I don't use this, neither do I use this. I use another technique which is gonna be much faster and that is by holding shift and then holding left, uh, holding right, sorry. So my bad. So hold your shift and your right mouse. Hold down shift first and then right mouse. When you do that, you have this window here. You have a radial menu which has almost all the main important stuff and then you have even extra stuff here. Plus, you have text if you want. So if you want to have a cube, just go on cube, let go of your mouse, you have a cube. That is much faster than clicking here and bringing a cube. But some might say, hey, you know, it's just a click, you can do this, right? But you're always going there and you're always using shell, which is again taking up space to your viewport. Why do that when you can do this, right? And if you want a cylinder, do that, just like that. You don't even have to go click, right? So these are all tips and tricks, which I really want you guys to start from the starting because it's gonna make you fast. No one told me this before. So shift and right, there you have it, right? So how I was making them come so fast was because I remember the radial menu. And for example, if you need a spear, just remember that it's on the right. So when you hold shift, right, click, swipe to the right, and let your mouse go. And that's it. So if you remember it, you know cube was six o'clock. Do this, and there you have it. This comes with practice. It's gonna mess up sometimes, but you'll eventually get it. And once you get it, it's really cool, right? So that's how you bring up simple primitives. Now, let's see how you can move them. So you have three main tools in Maya to moving an object, you have move, rotate, and scale. Move is move, rotate is rotate, and scale is basically changing the size of it. So you can access them in different ways as well. You can go to your toolbox here, click on this, and you will see a gizmo. 
gizmo is these three lines here which help you uh, show you what's y z and x if you click on this it's rotate this is scale as simple as that and move and scale are almost the same they they show they do the same things uh i mean they do change a couple of things but the manipulator here does almost the same so for if you go in the middle of this click and drag you can see that it scales overall if you go here scales on y scales on x scales on z this is basically scaling on two axes instead of one so this will scale it on x and z but not the y and it's the same thing for the rest once you get this it's the same with move except you're moving it so you're moving it in different directions right and you're moving it into two different planes that's it and if you move it in the center you're moving it literally everywhere you can see that the x y and z have different values at the same time i would not recommend you guys to move this move any objects like this doesn't work out that well because you don't know in space in world space where it is but yeah that's pretty much it so once move and that is done let's move on to rotate rotate is quite simple as well go into the axis and you can rotate it on the axis itself if you come in middle of an every axis and click it's all three this is random rotation and just use it whenever needed don't use it always because this is just too random you won't have any control over any values and this outer circle here is rotating while the camera is your center point so for example this is center so if I rotate it's going to rotate around that and if I move my camera now this is the center so that'll move around that right and if I move it completely on top and go to the outer circle you'll see there's no difference because yeah that's how that works if that's ever needed for you guys so you can rotate it that way or you can always put in values and change anything you want from the go here and while we are talking about this this is the channel box it basically has you know the values and it shows you everything and every time you make an object the starting object has inputs so if I open up this, you have extra inputs. You can directly even change the input from here, right? And you can do this quite many ways. If I click on this, I can put in a value, which changes. I would, um, you could do that. I usually click on the attribute name. So when height is selected, come in your viewport, hold down mid mouse. When you hold down mid mouse, you see that your cursor changes now swipe right and left and you change it you can do this as well any of your preference so now if I zoom in if I go into radius come here mid mouse click you can see that the radius changes subdivision come here click and you can see that I'm adding subdivs to my cylinder and this actually has uh, these options are for everything so if I bring a spear you can go click here and you can see that the spear has all this oh and you can even click and hold your left mouse and drag down to select multiple attributes come come to the viewport mid mouse and there you go you can alter both of them and if you don't want to alter both just click on one and you can alter just one side that's the channel box it has basic values and a few input if I go to attribute, this basically has more info about the translate right here, even the poly sphere. This is the radius and the subdivision axis, which was accessible right here in the channel box. These two, but it even has its shading group and the material applied to it. Extra info. That's it. And there you go. So that's how you make a primitive, move it around, scale and etc. Now, let's see how you can actually optimize your scene, keep your values always correct, and work uh, on your scene. So let's get a cube. 
I'm going to scale it. Now you can see that it has a scale value, right? And let's say that I rotated this 45, right? So it's 45 rotation. And let's say I moved it on the X five. So now you can see that it has values to it, right? So what if you want to keep this as your default position? And as you can see, the gizmo aligns itself with the object because it's rotated 45 now. But what if you wanted the cube to be this way, but you want to move it exactly up? This is moving the sideways because the gizmo has changed now. So how do you fix this? There's something called freeze transformations and you do it by going into modify freeze transformations. When you do that, you see that your gizmo is correct. Everything has gone to default. Now this is this model's default position, right? So now you can move it up and there you go. That's freeze transform. Now, for example, let's say that you have one more cube, right? And you have this cube here. I'm gonna hold down left, select, make a bounding box, select these two and go to mesh and then hit combine. Now these two are combined. Now they are one object, as you can see, right? And once you combine objects, they get a freeze transform on them. So now that this is done this way, and let's say you want to separate them again. So you say, okay, I'm done combining. Let's separate it. So you go into this and you hit separate. There you go. It's separated. Now, if I click on an object, separated objects have their gizmo on the origin. It's not the center of the object. Now you can see how this is going to be an issue because now the pivot's different. So if I rotate it, it's going to rotate it on the pivot. And that's kind of annoying, right? So that is where you use center pivot, which is selecting the object, going into modify and center pivot. There you go. Your center pivot's fixed. And now you can rotate this as needed. And over here as well. And you can go into window or modify center pivot. There you go. So that's freeze transform and center pivot. So one main reason why your Maya may be crashing is I can let me just freeze transform this because so you're going to go here, freeze transform. Perfect. Now, if you noticed every time you do some change to a model, this is your history. Everything gets stored here. Every edit on this cube gets stored here. When this starts overflowing, Maya is going to crash. This might be one of the biggest reasons Maya crashes, especially for me. But um, honestly, Maya has never crashed on me a lot of times. Like it has crashed one or twice because I always keep my history clean. Apart from that, I optimize my scene time to time. So it kind of, you know, stays really good. Like it doesn't crash that much. So hopefully it helps you as well. So if I click on this, and you see that your history is coming out, right? So one way to clear that out is, I believe it's select or edit. Yeah, it's an edit. Delete all by type and then history. Click on this and everything will go away. Now Maya has freed some memory here and that's what you need. That's how, you, so that's how I usually work. Now, if you notice, I was clicking an object, going into modify, and then there's freeze transform, and then there's civic, uh, center pivot, and then you know there's uh, delete all by type history. And you were clicking all of that again and again, right? It's all just, it just slows down your work. I want to make it faster for you. There are two ways of doing it. First, just set a hotkey. That's the only way. Actually, I'm gonna only tell you there's one way, which is setting a hotkey, because I want you guys to do that itself so you can actually do that by going into windows settings and preferences and hotkey editor give it a second there it is 
right? Now what you do is, you know which option you want. You want a center pivot. So click on this and search for center pivot. There you go. It's in modify center pivot. So I have assigned center pivot to control all and C. My freeze transform is control alt and F and history delete is control alt and D. So if you notice your keyboard, D, F and C are in an upside down triangle on your keyboard. So if I move this object over here, right? And move this over here. And let's say that I have the pivot somewhere here, right? You see, it's all messed up right now at the moment. So how do I fix this? So I go here, right? And then I hold down control alt and watch when I hit C, center pivot, F and then D finished. There's no history. Everything is back in its place. So do that. Help yourself out. It's going to help you really in the long term when you set up hotkeys for your favorite keys. And once you do that, it's all clean and it's all good. And I have this an, there's an option called optimize scene, which you can uh, go here and you can see optimize scene. I have set up a hotkey for that as well. So if I hit alt in this, I don't even know what that is. But when I do that, it asks me if I want to optimize my scene and I don't even need to click OK. I just need to hit space. And there you go. It optimized my scene. So this is a little combo I want to show you guys what I usually do. So if I have this, if I move and I combine and separate and then I move this again and you can see that now it's messed up. It even has a history, right? All that stuff. And my scene is not optimized. So I just do this, center pivot, freeze this, bring this up, press space, and your compost done. So you cleaned up this mesh properly and you optimize your scene. Doing this and then hitting control S and then saving it time to time has always helped me. Maya has never crashed on me yet until unless I'm working on a very high project and I mess up something in it, right? So that's pretty much it. So I want you guys to set that up because it's gonna help you a lot. And yeah, that's for that. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a few more tools so you guys can actually start modeling. So get a cube, scale it, and this option is called insert edge loop and what that helps you do is add a loop on your model anywhere as long as you know your model is clean and it's all polygonal faces which is four edges right so you can do that in edit mesh and or mesh tools i don't even remember because i i never use this so go to edit mesh maybe here yeah Oh God, I don't even remember. Okay, you know what? That's actually good because that's the wrong way. I don't want to. I I don't want to teach you guys that way. So this is how I insert the edge loop, and I hope you guys uh, feel that this is much more easier. So click on the object, hold down Shift, and when you hold down Shift, and uh, you right click. So click on the object, go into your viewport, Shift, and right click. You see, you have an insert edge loop tool go on that right you see that your edges become blue now you can go on to an edge click on it and there you go click and drag and you can set your edge loop wherever you want let go and you are you put a loop here now because this is in edit mode you'll have to hit right click on the object go into object mode and there you go press w to bring up your move if you need that so there you go. Now you, your cube has a loop added to it. So that's how you add an edge loop. If you hold right click on top of an object, you get this menu here. If you go into edge, edge, sorry, edge, vertex or face, it goes into edit mode. So edge, now I can select edges of the model. And you can individually move the edge. If I right click and go to vertex, I can select a vertex and move that particular vertex. If I right click and go to face, I can select that face and move the whole face. 
that's how you edit in Maya. And once you're done, right click and go to object mode and there you go, your object mode's back. Right, now you have a different shape. So that's how you do that. That's how you basically go into edge, face and vertex and you can start pulling things around and stuff. And because we have this loop here, you add more edges and more vertices. So shift, right click, insert edge loop. I'm gonna insert the loop here, here, here. So I want you guys to freely just do this because you wanna get used to all this. And then right, go to object, click on this, go to vertex, select the vertex, and there you go, you can move it. Right, so try try this out, have fun with this. Just bring out everything, try random shapes and see if you get used to all this. And yeah, so when you do that, as you can still see that you're getting a history, Control Alt D and your history is gone, all good, right? So there you go. So you have this model here. Now let's delete that, bring a cube again, scale it up. Okay, so that's how you edit vertices, edges, and faces. Now, you can even do a tool called Extrude, which is quite, um, it's a really strong tool, which you will be using almost every single time. You go into face, you select a face, and then you hold down Shift and just pull out from the axis you need, and you literally extruded the edge extrude the face, I'm sorry. So you select this face, hold down, shift, and there you go. That's how you extrude, right? That's one way. The second way is when you select your face, hold down shift, right click, and you have extrude face. This option will only work when you're in face selection mode. If I'm in the object mode and I hold down shift, it's not gonna come. It's gonna go to, extrude. you will see an extrude right but you will not have any control over what you want to extrude if i go into face and select this face and then hit shift and down and extrude it's gonna go into extrude that face right you will get this manipulator here and you can extrude now right and while this is on you can hold down shift and then extrude again click on this or click on the center anything you like and then you can you know extrude it inwards on that plane and just hit W and if I hold down shift I can extrude it out again there you go and you have another shape there so that's how you extrude right so you can play with this so you guys uh, I would really appreciate it if you go in move your object like that you know scale it out like that add in an insert edge loop put one here one here right and then go into face extrude this out press R while you're in this phase and then you know you can scale it and push this back and go to this edge push this down and push this down a little and you bring in a cylinder rotate this to 90 degrees switch to your orthographic view whichever you like press r scale that you know what yeah scale that put it in place and go into your top view yeah it's perfect and if you want to ever duplicate an object click on an object press ctrl d and you have another duplicate of it place it and voila um i don't know what that is but voila so that's how you extrude faces and do all that crazy stuff so get used to that and the last thing i want to show you guys is basically how you can snap objects this is gonna be a little tricky at first and uh, I'm not gonna show you exactly how to snap I'm just gonna show you how to uh, you know edit your center pivot on the objects so let's bring a cube scale that out bring that up now 
For example, if I click on this cube, you can see that the center pivot is exactly on the center of the object. Let's say you don't want this. Uh, let's say that, you know, this was actually a door. Let's say that this was a door and you wanted to open the door. So this door has to open from one side. There's no door which opens up this way, except if it's, you know, a circular door which is rotating. So how do you fix this? So if if you, there was just one way of moving this center pivot somewhere to this corner, so you know, you can then rotate it. And you can actually do that. That's by holding, uh, you can click on insert. When you click insert, it goes into this. This is your, uh, you know, it's a manipulator to move your center pivot. As you can see that it's not moving the object, it's just moving your pivot. So you can bring it somewhere here, right? Hold insert again. I mean, just tap insert again, and there you go. Ta-da! So you can move your center pivot just by tapping insert, right? That's one way. But if you notice, that's just free, uh, free roam for the center pivot. You can see that it's not snapped exactly the way you want. If you want to snap it, then you don't have to tap insert. Just hold V. Yeah, I'm holding down V. That's why it's doing that. And if I move it, you can see that, uh, you know, the object moves. But if I hold down V and D, then you get this manipulator. This is the same manipulator which uh, insert gets you. So hold down V and then D. And then if I move this, it's going to snap to one of the vertex. Remember, it always snaps to the vertex. So if I hold V and D, click on Y and then snap it up. It snaps only on the Y. That's why it went in middle of this. If I hold B and D again and bring it up to X, now the center pivot has snapped to this vertex here. And that's how you do that, right? So let's uh, say that you wanted to snap this in the center of this face. So how would you do that, right? There's one way. First, you can put, uh, for example, go into edge loop, you can add an edge here and then add an edge here. Just see where the center is, you know, assume. And there you go. Go in object mode. Click on W. And now if you hold down V and D, click on this center and then just move it. It's going to snap there. And there you go. It snapped to the center. So now you can rotate this, right? So yeah. So that's how you basically snap the center pivot to objects right and that's basically how you actually snap it to even objects so now that you know this let's duplicate this object bring that out right let's say i want to snap this vertex to this vertex here so what you do is first you bring your center pivot to wherever you want to do it so v and d hold down center and then snap it right here and then let's say that this was moved this way right so what you do is firstly you hold down B and D click on this oh and it's gonna snap here first but if you hold down B and D it's gonna move the center pivot we don't want that we just want to snap so hold down V and click on this and you can then snap it to this object there you go and then move this over here that's it so V is the snap with the object while moving the object, whereas V and D will snap only the center pivot. And there you go. That's how you snap uh, your center pivot to vertices, right? And if I go into the top view, and if V and D is snapping to vertices, but X and D is snapping it to the grid, this world grid here. So if I hold down X and D, you can see that it snaps the grid. It's literally snapping to the grid now. It doesn't snap to vertices. Even if you bring it close to the object, it won't snap to the vertices, right? But if I hold down V and D, you can see that it only snaps to the vertices here. So yeah, those are your two snapping things. And that's it. Okay guys, so that concludes the video. I hope I um, was not too fast and I hope I gave enough detail about you know what I was doing and you guys understood it 
if there's any way I can improve this and help you guys understand it much better, please let me know in the comment section below and I will keep that in mind and I'll start teaching it that way. If there are anything you want to learn or any specific tool you want to learn, please let me know as well or just leave a comment section that, hey, I wanted to model this. Could you, you know, explain how do you do this or that or any step? I'll be gladly, you know, I'll gladly show it to you. So I'll wait for the comments. I'll make a list of a few comments who have doubts. And in the next video, I'm going to address them all together. And that's how I'm going to keep it. So hopefully this helped you and welcome to Maya. Welcome to my world 3D. And hopefully you can start making, you know, very simple objects. And yeah, pretty much all the best. Good luck. It's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of patience, but you'll get there, right? And let me know if I can help in any way. Thank you. And do subscribe if you like the video. Thank you guys. Take care.